Welcome to another episode of Behind the Curtain. I'm your host, Paul Chapel, And today I want to focus on Pixelmator. Now, Pixelmator is kind of like Photoshop. If you're like me, you grew up with Photoshop, and then Adobe kind of went for the cash grab. They made everything subscription. I mean, part of the reason is because so many people pirate uh, Photoshop. Let's be honest about that. But if you're like me, I kind of dropped Photoshop a few years ago. I started using Pixelmator, and then, you know, they came out with another version of Pixelmator called Pixelmator Pro. So I'm, now I'm using Pixelmator Pro. If you, if you know anything about Pixelmator, it was, uh, and I, I got the old version right here. Let's give you an idea. Pixelmator is pretty much a Photoshop clone. You got the, you can see here, you got the little uh, ribbons or whatever you want to call it open and, you know, you can move them around or whatever. And sometimes you would close one and you're like, oh, where, where's my, where's my ribbon? And it just kind of got to be a hassle. And the people at Pixelmator decide to make it a little bit simpler. They did their own thing, which I like. So basically I'm going to de demonstrate kind of how the new Pixelmator, Pixelmator Pro works. And in doing that, I'm going to just demonstrate how I create wallpapers for my show. Cause if you watch my show regularly, you, you might've noticed, uh, let me bring, just bring something up. Uh, show that I've done in the past. Uh, for instance, Triple Frontier, which was a Netflix movie. You may have noticed, uh, and I'll just pause it here. You just notice in the background here, I have this nice little wallpaper from Triple Frontier. You might ask yourself, where did you get that wallpaper? Because Netflix is notoriously hard to find wallpaper like this for. And if you want to know the truth, I made it in Pixelmator Pro, which is the whole purpose of my demonstration today. Now, if you're just looking for the wallpaper for a regular movie, it's usually easy to find. You can go to Bing like I did and you could you could look go ahead and type in the name triple Frontier movie. See, I've already done that search, so it comes right up. You go to images, and I and I recommend Bing because their image search is a little bit better than Google. I have no idea why. It just is always served me a little bit better. But as I've said before, it's very hard to find a good wallpaper from Netflix. They just don't do wallpapers. You can find some, but you see, they they're not real big. One of the tricks you can you can kind of use with with Bing is you go to image size, and you go to extra large, and it will actually find some of the ones that are a little bit bigger. Now, uh, I've already downloaded, as you can see over here on my wall, my uh, desktop. So I'm not going to actually download anything because it's already done. But just to give you an idea. Uh, you, you see how small that picture is, even, even the extra large ones. 1068 by 911, that's not going to fill my, the screen on my Retina Display iMac. The, the, the dimensions on my Retina Display iMac are 5120 by 2880. So that's gonna, not even going to come close. There's another one over here. It's uh, 1920 by 1080. Now that, that's a little bit better, but you see somebody kind of wrote over it with their own stuff. And yeah, I don't want to deal with that. So anyway, I'm going to, as I said before, let me shut that off. My, my little trailer is playing. So I got, I got the images I'm going to use here. And I'm just going to right click on it and open, say open with Pixelmator Pro. Now, I do have to say at this point, this is a Mac app. So uh, you're not going to, if you're on PC, you're not going to be able to find this app um, in, the, in the Microsoft Store or anything. 
So just know that going in. You have to have a Mac. I use a Mac. I've been using Mac since college. Since my, I learned how to, to back then, I, I started using a Mac because back then there was like two really good movie editors that was Avid and Avid was very expensive and then there was Final Cut Pro. You get Final Cut Pro in a student store for $500, which was very cheap back then. Now you can get it for like 200 I think it is. So it, it's gone down in price, but back then it was the only affordable movie editor. So as you can see here, you don't have the little ribbons. O over here on the right, you have your your tool sets and you notice every time you click on a tool set it gives you all the little options now that's very very cool now i'm gonna what it is i like this picture here and i'm i want to use that for my wallpaper i don't want the names of the actors in the movie i i leave that for something to talk about when I do my reviews. So what I want is I want, I'm going to just go back to my desktop for a second. What I want here is I'm going to open this, go ahead, open this in pixel Mayor pro two. And you'll notice it'll give it, it gives this new image its own little tab. You can go back to that other image. See that? That's pretty cool. So as you can see here, I like the picture in this uh, um, image, but I love the title a little bit more in this image. So I'm gonna transfer this title over to this image and cover up all these names. So first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take the, the, the rectangular selection tool right here, and I'm just gonna draw a rectangle around this. And I'm just going to go up here to edit. I'm, I'm going to do everything from the menu up here so you can see how I do it instead of using keyboard shortcuts. So I'm going to go up here. I can copy this. It really doesn't matter, but I'm going to go, to go ahead and cut it. And I'm going to go back to this image and I'm going to go, I'm going to paste it. And as you can see, it creates another layer up here. And you, and you have all your layers over here on the, on the left, which is, is pretty nice. You can, you can manipulate the layers if you want to. You want to put this behind this image, you can do that. But of course, it's going to disappear. So I, I want it in front, but I'm going to take it back. Okay, so as you can pretty much see already, it's too big for this image. So I'm just going to undo um, everything I just did. I'm gonna undo that paste and I'm gonna make this image bigger. And like I said, my retina display is 5120 by 2880. So I'm gonna just go here to tools, go to image size, I'm gonna make this image bigger. So I'm just gonna put 5120 in here. Now you'll notice it scales proportionally because I have the scale proportionally on. Now I'm going to leave that checked because if I don't leave it checked, it's just going to squeeze. Well, I'll show you what it'll do. If I, if I take that off and I go ahead and make it the dimensions of my retina display, it's going to kind of squish the image a little bit. And you don't want that. Everybody's head is, is very fat now. So I'm going to undo that. I'm going to go back to tools again, image size. And like I said, I'm going to put in 5120, but I'm going to scale proportionally. Now I can go go back, and I'll show you that later how I'll fix this problem with the height. But for now, I'm going to hit OK, and and now the image is too big to work with. Now I'm going to go to 75% right here. Well, let's take it down a little bit more, 50%, and now I can see the whole image. So, I'm going to go back and I'm going to use this that I cut out. It should still be in my, my copy editor. I'm going to hit paste again. And you see now, now it's a lot smaller. 
Well, what you can do is you position that layer, you go to the corner here and it'll give you this little expansion indicator and you just make it big. I'm going to make it big enough, just big enough to cover up those names. And, I'm, and you see how it has a guide for the center of the image, so that's real handy. I didn't have to set up anything to do that. That's just Pixelmator being efficient. Okay. Now you'll notice right off, it kind of cuts off the heads of the actors, and I don't want that. So what I am going to do, I go to my eraser tool, and I'm just going to erase a little bit of the image. Now, you got, you got to remember, it's not going to have an effect. See, I'm pressing my, my mouse button right now. It's not going to have an effect on anything down here because if you notice, I'm on the upper layer. It's only going to have an effect on this layer at the top with the title. But you got to be careful not to um, erase anything you, you actually want to keep. So but I'm just going to kind of steadily erase that so that his hairline comes back and his hairline comes back. And voila, it's not cropping off their heads anymore. Okay, this is great. You know, I pretty much could use this if I wanted to as my wallpaper, go ahead and hit export and make an image, a, a full image out of it. But this, this is a few things I'm bothered by. I'm bothered by the way this background does not blend in between the letters and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use quick select now I've taken classes in Photoshop in the past and I always call this the magic wand because once you see what it does you'll be saying you understand why I call it that because it just does I don't know how this technology works it just works but I want to select all these letters so that, well, I, 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 I'll get to that in a second. First, I'm forgetting a step. First, I'm going to go to Arrange. I'm going to merge all my layers. So I'm going to just go to Arrange and hit Merge All. And that, what that's going to do is make everything one layer. So... I can uh, do what I'm, I'm, I'm about to attempt. So I still got the quick select over here selected. I'm going to go in here. And I, I was on the wrong tool. This is quick select, sorry. So I'm going to go in here with quick select. And I, I'm going to select that T. I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to go and... Select, painstakingly select all these other, all these other letters. Now, most of the time, quick select will just go ahead and highlight the whole letter, but sometimes you got to kind of move it around and select part of it, and then you go down to the bottom, select the other part. but I'm holding down the shift key on my keyboard to, to do all these selections. Now, as you can see, every letter is selected now. But what I want to do is, if I were to use, I'm going to use the clone tool to, 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 to copy this background. If I were to use it now, it would only copy within what I've selected. And that's not what I want. I want to copy this background in this white space around these letters. So what I got to do is I got to go up here to edit and go to, go to invert selection. So that actually... Is going to invert my selection so that everything else is selected. Now, I'm going to go to my clone tool. 
Now, in the new version of Pixelmator, this, they, they made some improvements to the clone tool. As you can see down here, if I were to start using this clone tool right now, it's going to copy what you see um, down here at the bottom. So I want to move this. This is the area you're going to actually be cloning from right here. So wherever you move it is, is where the clone tool is going to copy. So I want, this is a good area right here that I can use. So I'm just going to drop it right there. And as you can see, you can see that's already before I even do anything. This is, you can see the, the background coming through here. So what I'm going to do is just start cloning that area. And because I selected those letters, as you can see, that background is not having any effect on the letters themselves, which is what you want. And it's copying off from this area. Now, you, you might think to yourself, well, that's, that, that's going to get kind of monotonous and you're going to be able to tell that you know, it's not going to be as random as you want. Well, you can move this little selection area and, and, and just, you know, you can go back even and copy that area to make it a little bit more random. Now, you got to be careful. You, you don't want to, like I said earlier, this is one layer, so you don't want to copy this on the heads of the actors. So you just want to go as close as you can. And remember, that selection is keeping this out of your your letters. Now I want to make it a little bit more random. I'm gonna I'm gonna um, I'm gonna take the the source. It's called the source position, and I'm gonna put it over here. Now I'm gonna copy this background. I just I'm just filling in all these areas. And the brush size on, on, on this clone tool, you can adjust it. You can make it smaller. As you can see here, see I made it smaller. You can make it, but I like to keep it at, for something like this, keep it at 50%. I can just get it done a little bit faster. And voila! Now the background is, I'm going to go back and like copy some of this over here too, just to make it even more random. And voila, that background has been copied around those letters. And it now looks like, looks like somebody went in here professionally or it looks like something Netflix may have created for their own movie. The problem is this, this, as I said before, this whole area is a little bit too wide, not, no, not a little bit too wide, a little bit too high. So I don't really need this bottom down here. I just need the actors and I need the title of this movie. So I'm gonna go back to tools and I'm going to go to canvas size and here instead of changing the image size I'm going to change the size of the canvas so I'm going to put in that number I tried to put in earlier 2880 and you see what it does it, 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 this is the it gives you an area to work with is basically showing you the parameters of that new height level that you put in, and you can adjust it. So all I have to do is I don't need the bottom. I'll just adjust it till I get the very top, and I, I got these actors all within frame. And out there, you know, I'm confident that I have it exactly where I want it. I just hit OK, and voila my wallpaper is done. 
So I hope I didn't go too fast for anybody. Just that's that's the great thing about video, though. You you can rewind it and see the steps that I made to to, to get this. But basically, after all this is done, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna deselect. Take the selection off, and I'm going to export this image. And I will go to my folder where I'll put my, my wallpaper. And I'm just gonna I'm gonna just uh, rename it Triple Frontier Wallpaper. And I'm gonna I'm gonna export it. At this point, I'm just gonna close, and I'm gonna say save and quit. Um, I can delete these images now. I don't need them anymore. And as you will see in a second, I'm gonna change my desktop background. And voila, I have my wallpaper. And if I'm about to do my show, if I'm about to do the review for this show or this movie, I can just go into system preferences and remove the, as I do in every one of my shows. I just automatically hide the dock. And I go to general and I automatically hide the menu bar. And voila, I got the wallpaper that I need while I'm doing my review. So that's just a, this is just a basic tutorial on um, Pixel, great little introduction on Pixel Mail Pro. There's a lot more you can do with it. Trust me, I've been using it for a while now, but that's that in a nutshell is how I create movie wallpaper and I hope you get something out of this it's just you know tricks of the trade but uh that's all I got for today I hope you enjoyed it I would like to thank my subscribers and um encourage you if if you like this show go ahead and hit that subscribe button and give me a like if you found this useful give me some comments if you you thought I did something stupid, or there's some way I can do it easier, hey, I'm open to your criticism. I'm not afraid of criticisms. But uh, that's all I got for today, and I will see you when I see you. Thanks for watching.